Hi everyone, welcome to the Royal Institution in London. I'm here to tell you a bit of a story today. It's kind of a famous story. It's about a cholera outbreak that happened in London in 1854. And the, see, the problem was, at the time, no one knew what caused cholera. But there was one London doctor who decided to investigate the problem and using data, using statistics, he found the cause of cholera. And this story has become kind of scientific folklore and it happened just 10 minutes away from where we are now. In the 1800s, London was suffering from these outbreaks of cholera. And cholera, it's a horrible disease. So cholera can cause dehydration, vomiting. If you leave it untreated, it can lead to a high fatality rate. And at the time, just to show you how bad it was, it was a relatively new disease, but in the space of 20 years, it had led to 14,000 deaths in the UK. Now, no one knew what caused cholera, but there were some competing theories. One popular theory, uh, it was caused by bad smells. That was called the miasma theory. So that might be things like uh, animal dungs in the street. It might be the smell of rotting food. There was an, even an idea that it was caused by the old plague pits from the Black Death. But there was one person who had another idea. That person was John Snow, a London doctor who worked here in Frith Street and he was already getting a bit of a reputation as being an expert anaesthetist and including chloroform which he personally administered to Queen Victoria herself during the birth of a couple of her children. That's kind of cool. And he was also interested in these cholera outbreaks which was lucky when one happened just a few streets away. It started on the evening of August 31st 1854 and in about three days, 127 people had already died and people had started fleeing the area. And that's when Jon Snow decided to investigate the outbreak. Hmm. So he started collecting data. He had a list of all the deaths. But collecting data is one thing, but what's more important is what you do with it. One thing you could do is plot that data against time so you get a graph like this. And something like this can be useful, but in this case, it tells us nothing about the cause of the outbreak. So Jon Snow started to dig a little deeper. He started talking to the locals and to the families of the people who died. And he was looking for something that they had in common. Later, Snow would plot these deaths onto a map. And it's a remarkable piece of data visualization. And if you look, it's actually the public water pump in Broad Street. And if you look where the other water pumps are, there are no deaths clustered around these water pumps. So it gave Snow the idea that the deaths were caused by the infected water in Broad Street. So Snow had a theory that it was the polluted water in the well that was causing the cholera. There are a couple of things though that didn't fit with this theory. For example, there was a brewery nearby and a prison, and these people were not getting sick. But with a little bit more investigation, Snow worked out that the people in the prison had their own water supply, and the people in the brewery were drinking the beer instead. Some other things that didn't seem to fit with Snow's theory were the deaths that were happening away from Broad Street. Uh, for example, uh, there were some children that were dying and when he investigated further, it turned out that they were going to school near Broad Street and then passing the Broad Street pump, collecting water on the way home. Uh, another person who got sick was collecting water from Broad Street because she preferred the taste. Jon Snow took his findings to the local health authority and they didn't believe his theory that cholera was transmitted by water. They were all like, you know nothing, Jon Snow. But fortunately, the evidence was convincing enough that maybe in an excess of caution, they decided to remove the pump handle, making the pump useless. Some later detective work by Jon Snow revealed that it was actually a cesspit that contained dirty infected nappies that was leaking into the Broad Street well. But people didn't really like the idea that they were drinking polluted water. The idea of bad air remained popular for years later, even with the scientific community. The fact is that the well whence Dr. Snow draws all sanitary truth is the main sewer. His den is a drain. In riding his hobby very hard, he has fallen down through a gully hole and has never since been able to get out again. And so there we leave him. 
the handle was returned to the Broad Street pump and people started using it again. In the end, the outbreak caused 616 deaths and the legend is that by removing the handle from the pump, it ended the outbreak. But that's probably not true because the deaths were in decline already because people were already leaving the area. But what is important is that Snow didn't just produce a map. He made a detailed statistical analysis where he compared people's profession and their gender and their age with the likelihood of getting cholera. After the Broad Street outbreak, Snow started a new investigation into two water companies. One company was getting their water from the Thames, which was polluted with sewage. And the other water company was getting their water from a cleaner source. And this water was being delivered to houses almost at random. Snow examined the data from 300,000 people and it showed that houses that were getting polluted water were more likely to get cholera than other houses on the same street. Of course, ultimately, Jon Snow was proven to be correct. By drinking polluted water, it causes cholera, and knowing what causes the disease is essential to preventing further outbreaks. If you're ever in London, you can visit Broad Street. It's now been renamed Broadwick Street, and you can visit the location of the famous Broad Street pump. Uh, this is a replica of the pump, and notice it has the handle removed, and you'll find this in front of the pub on Broadwick Street, which is now named the John Snow. <laughs>